I should feel bad for Falafel Copter. Not one SJW that I can recall gave him moral support or made a show of SJW solidarity. No, it was like you didn't exist. Must be due to the fact that he's male and white. Well, off-white in his case. Lol. Falafel Cockgobbler, if you were girl or tranny, you would have received way more support and even some Patreon bucks. Still sucks to be you. Oh, there's my problem. I forgot to link people to my Patreon. Come donate to my Patreon at http.com slash slash falafel at patreon underscore dot com slash com. So three months ago, I had a run-in with Baphomet, 8chan's doxing board. I made a tongue-in-cheek response video, which they found and posted on their forum. They decided this would make a good vector for harassment, so a bunch of them came over to watch it, downvote, and leave inane comments. I wonder if he's the kind who gets sad over downvotes. No, I was more concerned about views, and you guys gave me a bunch. Thanks! Go ahead and incriminate your YouTube profiles, I guess. I wasn't too fussed about it since their comments just proved my point, and I moved on. But three months later, I see that one of these edgelords is still there for some reason, spouting a bunch of Xbox Live nonsense. I am really not of caring. It is of nothing to do with me. I am only in this for laughings at retard homosexes like Falafel Copter and UO. Both of UO are in needs of removings. Oh noes, what if I get removinged? The reason I bring this up is that he brought up an argument I saw them spout several times while they were targeting me. That I didn't get enough support from other SJWs when I was targeted, and that I would have gotten that support if I happened to be a woman, trans, or gay. This line of reasoning is so strange that it's kind of difficult to wrap my mind around it. It implies that they think there's a certain amount of support that I deserved, or think I deserved, and that I didn't reach whatever amount that was. I never really felt like that, but clearly they think this is something I should be concerned with. Alright, I'll bite. Let's think about this for a minute. Here's the question. How much support does someone being harassed deserve, and how can we tell when they aren't getting enough of it? Is it true that if a straight cis male is targeted, they don't reach that amount? Before I continue, keep in mind that support as a term is really vague. Some people desperately want attention and visibility because it benefits their business model. Some people just want private solidarity and to fade back into the background because any visibility would increase the harassment they're receiving. This is why it's always important to ask for permission before you give someone a signal boost. As for me, I happen to like visibility and attention, so in my case that kind of support would be beneficial, but it's important to note that this isn't always the case. Anyway, part of the reason they targeted me was to prove that my gender and race would leave me without enough support. So I think it's safe to use my experience as an example. First, let's talk about how hard I was hit when I was targeted. I received a grand total of about three death threats and one rape threat. A bunch of takeout was ordered in my name, which never got anywhere because I live in a condo. I got sent a couple of Bibles and some porn. I had to change my phone number to avoid some spam. I took exactly one day off work to shore up my defenses. And I was scared for a while that I might get swatted, but didn't. All in all, this experience was a little scary and a lot annoying, but generally I didn't have to deal with much. They gave up within about two days when their thread dropped off the front page. Compared to the people who had to deal with this for years and had been stalked and swatted, what I went through doesn't even begin to compare. So then, keeping that in mind, let's look at the support I received. First, when I was initially targeted, a Twitter user tipped me off to the thread so that I could start showing up my defenses. She did this not once, but twice, and it helped greatly. Second, when I posted a thread about what was happening on the subreddit Gamergazi, I got 85 upvotes, a bunch of encouraging comments, and someone gilded me. Which, to those who may not know, means they bought me a month of premium service on the website. I didn't really know what to do with it, but it sure felt nice. Third, when I tweeted about what happened on Twitter, YouTuber Zenistrad pointed it out, and that got 10 retweets, which tripled my Twitter follower count. As a result, my first serious attempt at YouTube ended up getting cross-posted on Gazi, which led to a bunch of views and awesome thought-provoking comments. Awesome. Lastly, when I mentioned it to Gamergate, they laughed, and they were generally assholes. But one individual, who goes by the handle Bastendorf Games, showed solidarity and called Baff out for being the assholes they are. He also actively tried to research what was going on and give me advice. We disagree on many things, but he continues to be the only representative of Gamergate who has ever treated me with any degree of respect and decency. 
Was that enough? It felt like a lot. I'm not really sure what Baff seems to think I expected. The Edgelord in my comments had this to say. Compared to other SJWs, your support was sparse. If you were some transgender fluid other kin on Tumblr with a talking ground squirrel as a headmate who also has a Tumblr, you'd not only be star athlete in the SJW Oppression Olympics, but you'd also get some of that hipster welfare, Patreon. So there's two parts to this. First, that I deserve more recognition. This makes no sense. Since, as I mentioned earlier, the other SJWs he's talking about got hit with worse. If all Zoe Quinn had to deal with was a couple days of prank fast food orders and a couple of threats, she wouldn't have had to leave her home. The only part of what happened to me that I felt was important to share was that I was targeted specifically because I was criticizing Gamergate. And, well, that got shared. As for the Patreon monies, well, I don't even have a Patreon. If someone felt sympathy and wanted to give me some, as they say, victim bucks, they wouldn't even be able to do it. I was never given money because I never asked for it. Furthermore, if I had asked for it, I wouldn't have needed it as much as others, because I didn't really lose any money over what happened. The lost day of work cost me about 90 bucks, tops, and I didn't lose my job because Baff was too brain dead to find out what my job was in the first place. Also, look at the high-profile individuals who have received the most crowdfunding after their harassment. They make things. They make things that people like. And for free. Anita Sarkeesian makes a YouTube series that a lot of people enjoy, myself included. And yes, unlike the seemingly endless line of people who, while arguing with her detractors, make it painstakingly clear that they dislike her work, I actually am a fan. I was watching and enjoying her stuff years before the Kickstarter. Zoe Quinn makes games. People like them. Depression Quest getting praised was the thing that made her start getting harassed in the first place. Randy Harper created a Twitter tool which made life easier and safer for thousands of people. It makes sense to donate to these people because their entire business model and ability to continue to create quality things depends on those donations. I, by contrast, hadn't really made much of anything for anyone at the point when I got targeted. I'm just some blue-collar goon with some editing software and no real content to speak of. There's no reason to throw money at me because I haven't yet proven that I'm capable of putting out content that's worth supporting. More importantly, not throwing money at me isn't going to make me starve because I have a steady source of income. Maybe someday I'll do the Patreon thing. I'm not good enough yet. Now, there's one last thing I want to touch on. These idiots keep bringing up the fact that I'm passably white as cis as the reason why I didn't get more support, and I think there's actually a grain of truth here. Remember before when I said that they only targeted me for a couple days before giving up? Why do you think it was that they stopped so quickly? Others have dealt with this stuff for far longer, and there were dudes in that thread who were talking about stringing it along for months. What gives? I submit that they lost interest so quickly precisely because they're a bunch of racist, sexist, transphobic losers and they couldn't find enough ways to keep their hate burning for me. If I had been a woman, or out as gay or trans, they probably would never have stopped. In that case, maybe a bit more support would have been justified.